Hey everyone, this is Exploring Fiction, and welcome back to another video. Hey, before we get to the video, check this out. 99% of my viewers are not subscribed. If you're a part of that 99%, please consider subscribing, as I would love to have you here. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So guys, by the time I am making and releasing this video, The Batman has been out in theaters for about a month. But, even though I'm late to the party, there's a reason the saying better late than never has been in our culture for so long. So, let me give you my quick thoughts about the Batman. First of all, I'll dive into the characters. Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne slash Batman was two sides of a coin to me. When he was Batman... I I loved it. I believed him completely as the Dark Knight. His Batman, his take on Batman was sinister and brooding, like like you expected from the trailers, but also menacing and dark in a good way. And I found myself believing every second of Pattinson as Batman. But as Bruce Wayne, I was not as satisfied. He just seemed too goth and emo and dreary and edgy to be Bruce Wayne to me. He didn't act enough like the billionaire playboy he is. He he acted like a, a spurned and dejected Bruce Wayne, who you could see the hurt from his past, but he didn't put on enough of an outward show that we're used to from Bruce Wayne, where even though we know he's feeling a lot of pain... He has to not show it in the public, and so I think that's the one area Pattinson could have improved in his Bruce Wayne portrayal, but overall, it's still a positive because of how how much I liked his version of Batman. Andy Serkis' Alfred was great for me in the little time we had with him. I, I think Serkis was a great casting choice as a grittier, more hardened version of Alfred, not just a... A caretaker, but a, a good mentor to Bruce. Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman was good as well. I, I liked the casting decision, race swapping aside, and I generally didn't have any issue with her. I didn't think she really stood out at all, but she was a good casting choice opposite Pattinson to be the bat and the cat. Colin Farrell as the Penguin was the biggest standout to me. I mean, I didn't even recognize Colin Farrell under his guise of the Penguin. And really, this is the definitive version of the Penguin for me. The whole mob boss aesthetic, kind of a tough guy. He kind of looks like a Penguin just by his physical appearance and not in the Danny DeVito way. And I just loved his demeanor how he was kind of a brash and loud character, as you'd expect almost a Gotham mob boss to be. And so, Colin Farrell as the Penguin was an absolute standout. Another bright star in this cast was Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon. Besides Gary Oldman, I don't think there's anyone else I would rather have playing Commissioner Gordon than Jeffrey Wright. Now, I know the whole race-swapping deal, and I understand it, but honestly, Jeffrey Wright just has the perfect demeanor and personality and his style of acting with the nervous, jittery, but also collected style. It, it just fits perfectly for Gordon, and honestly, even before he was announced as Jim Gordon in the cast, if you would have asked me who I would have picked to play Commissioner Gordon in the new Batman movie, Jeffrey Wright would have been it. So he lived up to all my expectations here. The Barry Keoghan cameo as the Joker and the deleted scene, I liked it. I think Barry Keoghan was a bright spot in an otherwise drab and boring Eternals. And so I... I, I could see that happening. Obviously, no one's going to top the best Jokers in the business, Heath Ledger and Jack Nicholson and Joaquin Phoenix. But if I were to pick a more regular actor, not really a method actor, who I would want to be the Joker, Barry Keoghan would have been it. And I, I was pleasantly surprised by his 
performance in Eternals, and I could see him as the Joker moving forward. Now for my most hot take opinion, in what I'm guessing would be a hot take opinion, but I did not like Paul Dano's Riddler. Now people are clamoring and up in arms and in love with Paul Dano's portrayal of Riddler, or this version of Riddler, and saying that he's the scariest and best Batman villain since Heath Ledger's Joker. But I just do not agree. Whereas with Heath Ledger's Joker, I was scared because of the performance, and you really felt like this character was crazy and menacing and intimidating because of the mystery and just the ruthlessness behind him. When it comes to Paul Dano's Riddler, I was more cringing and almost laughing. I think the whole portrayal was just over the top in the, in the worst way. The whole whispering and screaming into the camera did not work. I thought it was over the top and coming off as someone trying to act as someone being crazy, not someone genuinely crazy. And he just seemed like a huge wimpy crybaby especially when all of his plans went wrong. Paul Dano, to me, just did not pull this off very well. He seemed like an actor trying to play a crazy serial killer instead of a, a serial killer. And so, for me, Paul Dano's portrayal of the Riddler was not what I expected it to be and not what I hoped for. I love the whole style and aesthetic of this film being a noir detective film, and when I heard from early reviews that that's what it was going to be, I was thrilled. Obviously, with Batman being the world's greatest detective, I've always been waiting for a more detective, mystery-centered movie rather than superhero, and this one really delivered on that for me. The only problem I have plot-wise is that I felt near the climax of the movie when in the plaza area with all the... Riddler's followers, I felt like it turned into too much of a superhero movie for its own good. Now, I know Batman has to save the day in this epic heroic fashion, but I thought it kind of deviated a little too much from the noir, mystery, detective-style story it, it was for 80% of the movie, and I thought that was just a little disappointing. I was hoping that it would stick by that noir mystery style the entire way through. So while I don't really blame the movie for doing the usual superhero route at the end, because that's what most masked audiences want to see, and that's how superhero movies are trending these days, I still kind of wish that it had just stuck to the grim detective story it had been the whole time and resolved on a lower lower scale not exactly lower stakes just not as much spectacle superhero spectacle as it was given so that might be a strange gripe but i just had to throw it out there and finally the last thing i'll really say before i do my little summary is that there did seem like there were a lot of endings and things tacked on to the end of this film, but I wasn't really, it didn't really bother me too much. I had seen that a lot in early reviews of the movie, that it felt like it dragged on too long at the end, and while I think they could have cut some of the ending scenes, it didn't really bother me all that much. So guys, to kind of summarize it all, The Batman was a great experience in the theater, it was a great movie, Overall, the aesthetic and tone and Pattinson's portrayal of Batman really did it for me. And Colin Farrell as Penguin and Jeffrey Wright as Commissioner Gordon were great side characters who really made this movie pop and come to life. Paul Dano's Riddler was a big disappointment to me personally, just because I felt like his acting was too over the top and not convincing in the way he wanted it to be. And overall, the climax of the movie felt a little too mainstream, mainline superhero instead of noir detective. But other than that, I can't think of too much that really disappointed me about this movie. Um, I think it's definitely one of the top 
three or four Batman movies ever made. You know, I'll have to sit on it some more and look at it compared to other movies, but honestly, it's hard to compare. So, guys, I do recommend Matt Reeves' The Batman. If you haven't seen it already, go see it. And if you have seen it, leave a like and comment and let me know what you thought about The Batman. Um, subscribe if you're new here. And I, as always, I'll see you next time.